Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials here on Facebook. If you're joining us on YouTube, please be sure to come join our Facebook group where all of our videos air live before they're added to our YouTube channel unedited. And of course, if you're catching us live on Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those links are in the video description depending on where you're watching. Today's tutorial is pretty quick and easy. It's going to be on how to sublimate an MDF accessory stand. So if you don't know what that is, it looks about like this. It's a two piece item that's meant to hold your accessories. So um, when the bottom is in, it helps support it. And then you have a little ledge here where you can put your e-reader, um, it's a little small for an iPad, but you can put your e-reader here, uh, your phone to let it charge, there's space for your Apple Watch, um, for your Apple Watch and your Apple Watch charger, and really anything else that you wanna put on this accessory stand. With the holiday season coming up, this is a great item to push as a gift. I purchased mine from ACC Blanks, Amanda Woodergreen, hopefully I didn't butcher her name, she was our Small Business Saturday featured guest a few weeks ago, and you can find her video where she did a live Q&A and talked about her products. You can find that video underneath the hashtag Small Business Saturday or in the group guide for Small Business Saturday features. Her video is there. She offers a variety of sublimation blanks and um, laser cut blanks and blanks for lasers as well. So great variety. Um, the main things that I've purchased from her have been MDF cut items. She created some door hangers from the sunflower that I drew earlier this year, and I have several of those on hand. Um, I also purchased the earring size of the sunflowers because I'm kind of obsessed with that sunflower. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so when I saw this accessory stand, I was like, ooh, I really need one of those. Um, this type of stand has gotten really popular because we all just have so many things that need to be charged in. So with the holiday season coming up, this is a great gift to be pushing with your business. And honestly, it's great all the time because it's uh, suitable for birthdays and um, occasions like Father's Day and Mother's Day, even college graduation. This is the kind of item that you can personalize with a print of your choice that, um, appeals to your customer. You can always add monogramming, you can add quotes if you're looking for something that's a little bit more inspirational. Uh, definitely a lot of potential with this item, especially because there is some space here and it can be personalized for whatever your customer's interests are. Um, this type of stand that's an MDF stand easily sells for around $35, so that's a great price point as well. Um, You'll find that something like this is going to be easy to market, especially if you're at vendor fairs. And as you're about to see, they're very quick to put together uh, and print. They do have a film. If you notice, it kind of looks dirty. It's not actually dirty. It's um, it's that residue from the laser. There is a clear film on it. It's kind of starting to peel it right there. You can see it. I will uh, actually peel it off when we. There you go. I will actually peel it off when we go to press it. Um, definitely keep that on if you purchase anything that's laser cut until you are ready to press it so they don't risk getting fingerprint oils and things like that on them. So MDF stands, great gift all year round, pretty good price point at around $35 um, and completely customizable for whatever your customer's interest is. And I think that that alone is a great selling point. Um, and you know, this just helps clean up the clutter. I mean, who doesn't have clutter? We all have multiple devices. Everything needs chargers these days. And I know for me, I have reached the point where I'm so tired of my phone, my iPad, my Kindle, everything being on my nightstand. So I'm in the process of um, building a new dresser and I thought, well, my new dresser is gonna have, I think like two extra feet longer, wider, uh, so this is perfect. I can make this, I can put it on my dresser and then I can get that stuff off of my nightstand and have it across the room where I also won't be tempted to check my cell phone at three in the morning when I let Jasper out. So for people who are looking to sort of separate themselves from their phones in the middle of the night, another great selling point. All right, this will be a quick tutorial. Let's go ahead and grab our measurements. Uh, ACC, ACC Sublimation Blanks did provide a template, so that will make it easy. We're just gonna drop in some digital paper, keep it simple today, and then we will press it on our EnduraPress SD20. 
All right, so even though we have a template, we always wanna get our measurements. You wanna make sure that that is just like the number one thing that you do. It doesn't matter what measurements someone told you. It doesn't matter if you have a template. You always wanna get your measurements because you just never know if something is gonna be a little bit off. Now, laser cut items, generally shouldn't, but this definitely applies to most other substrates. And that is why we are starting to really emphasize the importance of measuring. The measurements that someone else gives you may not be correct for your item. And when you're doing something like this, you wanna make sure that you've got everything um, sized accordingly so you don't end up wasting a blank by having like a weird edge that wasn't quite to the edge. So just another little close up here. This is the two piece item slides through and then holds your devices and again this is the way it looks dirty because there's a film on it that's just like the residue from it being laser cut and wiped off um, but we will peel off that film before we press it so let's go ahead and get our measurements we're always going to be measuring the maximum distances of an item so for this it's actually this little edge here to the bottom because this little edge is just a little bit higher up than this edge is so we will Go ahead and do that. We've got eight and a half inches right on the dot, so that's great. Um, this tape measure is from Walmart. It's great because it has the fractions on the lines. And if you don't have a tape measure or don't know how to read a tape measure, there is a free printable PDF for PDF ruler on my website. And it has the decimal conversions so that you can easily enter them into your design program. All right, so we've got eight and a half by, let's see, we are at seven and seven sixteenths. And then our other piece, so on this one, our widest part is gonna be um, this these edges of the part that crosses over. We've got seven and seven and a quarter. Bye. five and five sixteenths. Now, if you're thinking, oh, this seems like a kind of a random measurement for these, that often happens uh, because something is being sized to a certain amount for a laser cut, for example, and then there's the space that the laser cuts because you're always gonna lose just a small amount, even if it's 1 16th, from whatever is being cut. This is the same as if you cut um, wood items with a saw, the average saw blade, or probably all saw blades, um, for like a circular saw, a miter saw, they are all 1 8th of an inch wide and you lose that 1 8th of an inch. So you do end up with kind of weird measurements as a result, but that's okay. That's why I have the great printable ruler on my website that, again, you can use to uh, get those conversions for the decimals into, or for the fractions into the decimals. I'm tripping over my words this morning. Okay, let's go ahead and hop over to Affinity Designer, get this set up to print. We are going to be setting up our artwork in Affinity Designer. I'm using the Windows version, but if you are using the Mac version, the steps you follow will be the same and your interface should look almost identical. There are a few nuances of the Mac version that are different. For example, you can't have your um, panels docked over here like I have, but you can have them floating anywhere on the screen. Affinity Designer is a very affordable and user-friendly graphic design software. We have a variety of free full videos on doing different things in this software underneath our um, Affinity Designer guide and playlist if you happen to be on our YouTube channel. If you are interested in learning absolutely everything that there is to know about this, about this software, then check out our Affinity Designer Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. This is an in-depth 
video course that's learn at your own pace on your own schedule. The course is designed for the sublimation industry, and it not only teaches you about all the tools and everything that this software has to offer, but it also gives you the opportunity to practice real applications doing a variety of design challenges where you have the opportunity to win prizes. It also comes with one-on-one -on -one support through each lesson if you have questions. And overall, the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive that this course is easy to follow. It's perfect for beginners and those who actually have a base knowledge alike. Uh, and if you use the group code sub that, you will save $30 when you sign up. The link is in the video description. So we'll go ahead and start by selecting File, New, and coming over to our Print tab. Anytime you're about to print something, you want to make sure that you set up your document space to be the same size as the page you are printing on. This is probably the number one mistake I see people make. They try and use a template and just print the template and then they often do not have the correct size print when it's all said and done. Based on our measurements, everything should fit on an 11 by 17 page. So I will go ahead and select that. For sublimation printing, your color format should always be RGB slash H. This does not apply to any other type of printing. It only applies to sublimation. Um, and your color profile should be sRGB, IEC 61966-2.1. These settings are your document settings. This has nothing to do with your ink. So for those of you who have ICC profiles that came with your ink, all of that is in your printer properties. It has nothing to do with your document setup. Document setup is universal. Printer properties is not. Printer properties is dictated by your printer, paper, ink. So different things, different meanings, and we do dive in depth to all of this terminology in the masterclass that I just mentioned. We will go ahead and select create. Jasper says, good morning. <laughs> so uh, first thing we want to do is import our template. We can do that by selecting our place image tool, which is this one that looks like a picture. And I've got my template right here that was provided for me after my purchase with ACC blanks. So you can see that she's got ones with bleed and then she also has her main templates. I'm going to focus on the ones with bleed. Oops because I wanna make sure that I do have um, that bleed out to the edges so that it's just a little bit past the edges. Uh, that way I will be able to have full coverage without any guesswork. So I select both of those to open. Because these are a template and they should be a set size, I just wanna click once so that they should import at the correct size. Now I say should, but this is also why we take our measurements. So let me just get them lined up on my page here. You'll see that there's uh, these guidelines that will appear as we're moving around our space. These are your snapping guides. They are activated by having this magnet icon selected. And then you can select from the drop down to make sure all of your options are checked there as well. The snapping guides just make it easy to align things center as you're moving around. And it's hard to tell on the screen, but when you're actually using the software, you'll notice that there is sort of a snap action that you feel as you're moving because it, um, you're, when you get close to that line, the program automatically pulls whatever object it is into line. Now you do have to move slowly as well to activate these because if you end up even just a tiny part over, they're not going to be there. I always like to center everything. I just think that it makes life a little bit easier. All right, so let's go ahead and check those sizes. I'm going to start with that bottom piece. And our measurements were 8.5 by 7 and 7 sixteenths. So 7 sixteenths is going to be 0.438. So if we look down here in our transform panel, we can see that it's at 8.787 and 7.847. So this looks like it's giving us about a quarter of an inch bleed around the edge maybe a little bit more, and that's perfect. So we will just go ahead and lock that aspect ratio and leave it as it is. 
And then for our phone dock base, our measurements were 5 and 5 sixteenths by 7.25. So again, it looks like we've got a little over a quarter of an inch um, in bleed zone, which is once again, perfect. So we don't need to adjust our measurements at all, but you always want to double check that. And if you're doing something that is full bleed and you don't have a template uh, for an, an item like this, check out my video on how to make your own template. It's really easy to follow and we do cover it in Affinity Designer. And then of course, you always want to add at least a quarter of an inch to your measurements so that you have that bleed zone and so it's easy to line up your item uh, on the paper, which you'll see that in just a minute. Because each of our pieces of our template are a PNG, we won't be able to just fill it with our fill tool. The designer persona of Affinity Designer is strictly for vector-based uh, graphic editing, and an image or a PNG is a pixel-based format. We will just choose to rasterize these, and then we can use a shape tool, or we can clip in digital paper uh, directly into the template. So you have two different options for clipping in. Um, if you want to tile your digital paper a certain way, then you're going to benefit from just clipping the digital paper in directly. I did do this in a tutorial about a year ago um, that was how to sublimate a Home Depot doormat with border. I will link that in the video description so that you can refer back to that uh, if you want to see that in action where we actually tiled it along the whole border because I wanted to have a certain flow of my pattern. For this, it's going to make more sense to use a rectangle that's clipped into our layers and then fill that rectangle with our fill tool so that we can have a nice uh, pattern across everything. So the first thing that we need to do is right click on each of these layers and select to rasterize it. This will convert it into a pixel persona so that we are able to clip in our um, pattern shape here. Without clipping this in, or without rasterizing this, when we go to clip this in, it's just gonna fill the boundary box, which we obviously don't want. Next, what we'll do is we'll select our rectangle tool. You can come over here to your color panel, choose that open circle, select no fill. Select your filled circle, and you can give this literally any color. It does not matter, because we're gonna fill it with a digital paper. Next, go ahead and click and drag to create two rectangles that cover your segments of your um, of your template. It doesn't matter if they're bigger, they don't have to be the exact size, they do just need to fully cover it. So if we um, take both of these and drag them down in our layers panel to the bottom, you can see that they are fully covering this. The next thing that we'll do is we'll select each one and we will clip it inside of whichever layer that we are planning to fill. So this one is for our bottom layer there. So to clip in Affinity Designer, so easy. Take the layer that you want to clip inside of the second layer. So the layer that's going inside is first. Drag it so that your cursor is touching the name of the layer that you want to go in. Not the icon, not next to the icon, not below the icon, not above the icon. Have your cursor touching the name you will see this three quarter rectangle shadow underneath. And when you release your mouse, you will see that it is clipped inside of it. It's not a group, it's clipped inside. This is the one step clipping mask feature of Affinity Designer. And then we will repeat and do the same for our second layer. Make sure to select down for both of your layers so that you can see those rectangles. We can select each rectangle in our layers panel by holding down the control or command key and selecting each layer individually. Next, we will go ahead and select our fill tool, which is this one with the rainbow colored wheel. Come up to our context toolbar, and from this drop down, we will choose bitmap, and then the digital paper that we are planning to use. Now, if your digital paper is not perfectly seamless, you'll want to come to this extend panel and try out the different options here for how it will repeat or tile um, your pattern. Mine is perfectly seamless because I created it that way. You can use these anchor points to rotate and resize your pattern until you are satisfied. So I'm gonna make mine, oh, right about there I think looks good. 
And I want to add my author logo on top of the the part that will be the back stand or the back the backboard of it. So I'm just going to zoom in there. And I will select my place image tool, grab my author logo, hit open, and then simply click and drag to resize this to where I would like it. I'm being cautious to not be too close to the edges because again, we do have that bleed mark. And I'm basically focusing on centering it right on this piece. So if we just come to the top where our ruler is and drag that down till we're right about halfway on our skull there, I'm just, you know, eyeballing this. Then I can line up that right on that. And you see, we got that um, red guideline there letting us know that we are in place. So that will be good there. If you don't have your rulers or you don't see one of the panels that we're using, simply go to View studio and you'll find all of your panels and options here and then there's also the option to show rulers column guides grids bleed mark all of that stuff there as well once you have everything set and ready to go you're ready to print simply go to file print choose your printer from your drop down menu and then you will want to select properties and set all of your settings based on your paper, printer, ink, whatever it is that you are supposed to do, your ICC profiles, all of that stuff will be done through your print dialog box, which is both this one and this one here. Uh, so for this, we are doing tabloid. I already have mine preset based on printer jack ink and paper with my Workforce 7710. Whenever you set all of your settings, you can simply click on this add remove presets button. And when you select that, it will give you the option to name and give an icon and then select that save button so that you can always have them quick and easy. Hit OK, hit OK again, and it's going to send it over to our printer. All right, so here's our transfer. The first thing that we want to do is peel off that protective film. So I'm just going to Sort of nudge my nail. It's a little hard to see on the camera. Nudge my nail on that corner and then peel it right off. Good. And then do the same with our other piece. This one I did already peel up a little bit though, so that one's a little easier. We're gonna want some heat tape. If you don't have a large enough heat press to uh, press the whole thing at once, then you will want to cut your paper, but I do, so I'm not gonna worry about that. And I'm just gonna get this lined up based on the template. Let's turn it sideways. And like I said, we're just gonna use some heat tape to secure it. So we'll start on this side. And because we have that nice border, we're just gonna make sure that we can see a little bit of our design around every edge and that it looks as centered as we possibly can get it centered and straight okay you never want to use adhesive spray on hard substrates because it can lead to uh, your image blurring that is strictly for textiles so let me move this into your view a little bit more um anytime i'm doing something like this i always use my nail to press my heat tape down into along that edge so that we get the most secure hold we can get um, as we are putting it. Now you don't need a ton of heat tape. Oops. Try not to move it in the process. Make sure we got this straight. Okay. You don't need a ton of heat tape, but you definitely do want to put several pieces on, especially for a bigger item like this, especially when it's going to be flipped over. If you guys haven't seen this great 
heat tape dispenser. I just found this on Amazon a few months back. And I'm like amazed at this thing because it cuts your tape and these great little strips, which just make everything so much easier for something like this. Well, for anything really. All right, now let's do our other piece. Once again, making sure we've got it nice and centered as good as we can get it. You know, you're just eyeballing it. As long as you see uh, what appears to be an even amount of your design on all edges, you should be good. And this is also why using digital paper um, with just like a simple logo or monogram is always a great idea because less that you can possibly mess up. When people start getting all crazy with tons of text and things like that, you definitely run the risk of um, not having things lined up correctly. Now, I don't think I mentioned it before, but these are $12 currently on the accsubblanks.com website. I did link it in the video description. This is a laser cut item that she offers and it's made from sublimation MDF. So one side is coated and that is the side that we have faced down, that white side. Um, just gonna add a few more here. And the resale point for these really is about $35. Um, so that's great profit margin because uh, these are pretty quick to put out. They only take 60 seconds with firm pressure. All right, I think I got enough tape to secure it because we have to flip this over and um, it is like a whole big sheet. I'm always a little hesitant there, but I think we'll be all right. <laughs> so let's come over to our heat press. And the recommended by Amanda is to do 400 degrees for 60 to 70 seconds. Now I have mine at 390. And I have, I'm going to put it up to 60 seconds, 60 seconds. I have mine at 390 because my heat press is running a little hot. Keep in mind that whatever your recommended time and temp is, is based on that company's heat press, which most often they're using higher end heat presses. It's your responsibility to know what variations might be necessary for your heat press and for your paper. So I'm using printer jack high release paper. So I always do about 10 seconds less on anything for thinner, um, for thinner substrates, thinner textile substrates, I can actually go about 20 seconds less. So it definitely makes a difference. I'm going to put blowout paper on the bottom and on the top. I want to put it on the bottom because we do have that outline, you know, that bleed from our design. And we don't want that to get on our rubber mat and transfer onto a future item. So I'm going to very carefully sort of holding both edges of this and flip it over and get it into place. Now I do want to move quickly so that I don't cause any ghosting from this part of my press that's over top of that. So I'm just going to get it into place. Nice firm pressure anytime you're doing MDF. Now, larger MDF items, you do want to do a little bit of a pre-press. This is small. I consider large to be anything over um, 12 inches because MDF is technically, um, MDF is technically like, it's like paper. <laughs> so the material of it can absorb moisture is my point. So because it can absorb some moisture, you do want to make sure that you do a little bit of a pre-press on larger items, but smaller items like this, it's not necessary. And you only need to do 10 to 20 seconds of a pre-press. So the main thing is to make sure we've got firm pressure. As I said, the recommended from ACC Blanks is 400 degrees for 60 to 70 seconds. I'm doing mine at 390. We're always going to see a temperature drop when you put your item in for 60 seconds because I am using printer jack high release paper, uh, the blue formula I currently have. It's available on Amazon. The pink formula is the new one. And as I mentioned, my heat press is running about 10 degrees hot. So I need to make sure that I set this accordingly for that. I got some heat gloves on because this is going to be hot.
and just pull that off really quickly. And then let me take one of my gloves off so I can get all this tape off of here. I'm gonna set this over here. We'll look at it in a second because it is very hot. So we want to get it off of the heat press so it can actually cool, which should only take a minute. Um, all right. <laughs> Our colors are looking fantastic. I'm definitely happy with it. Oh, so good, so good. Sorry, I'm having a close-up at my logo. Um, my logo has like a glitter texture in it that's just like really hard to tell um, normally because it's more meant, it's meant to be printed. Uh, originally I created it to do it with vinyl. <laughs> and so, um, I was just checking out the texture. It actually looks really cool because it's 3D'd. So can you see? It's a it's a pattern that's inside of my logo. Anyways, all right, this is almost cool. Oh, well, I'm going to put my gloves back on because this is actually pretty warm still. It will be cool in a few minutes, but once it's ready, you just slide that piece on just like that. And then you can put your phone on there and your charger can come right out on the bottom here I don't have my Apple watch handy but you can put your Apple watch here you can hang your keys here you can put your sunglasses here and everything that you need is put away on this nice little caddy where it looks great now this is the iPhone 12 Pro Pro Max so this is pretty hefty my last phone was not this heavy um, and it seems to be supporting it pretty good. So that's definitely encouraging. Well, there you have it. There is your MDF, um, your MDF phone caddy. This is mine printed using Affinity Designer, my Workforce 7710 with printer jack ink and paper and my EnduraPress SD20. You can leave questions or comments below if you're catching this live, or you can go ahead and post in our YouTube or in our Facebook group if you are coming from YouTube. The links for everything that we use today uh, are in the video description. And other than that, thank you so much for joining us.